Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Collier. Thank you for joining us. We'll get started here in just a second. Uh, it was brought to my attention that some of you may have not received uh, your gift certificate for your free lunch. If you haven't, um, please check your uh, spam folder. And if it's not there, send me an email and we'll get something out to you shortly. Rhonda, you ready to go? I think I am. <laughs> well, happy, happy Thursday, Thursday everybody. Right? The same thing here. So happy Thursday, everybody, and good afternoon. My name is Michael Collier, and I'm the business development manager for CS3 Technology. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to join us today uh, to return to review alternatives for your HR systems. Uh, Rhonda Rush, the manager for our HR payroll service group, is also with us today. Hello, Rhonda. Hi. I think everybody knows me. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, kind of I think a, I've talked to most of the people here. You're kind of a big deal amongst the HR yeah. crowd? A deal, at least. <laughs> All right. So I asked Rhonda to join us today. Uh, so she can share some of the detail about scissor tail functionality with you guys and answer any questions you may have. Many of you are currently still using Sage HRMS or other HR payroll uh, legacy products. Because of that, we would like to begin with an update on Sage HR. Um, and the basic concepts are the same regardless of the legacy software that you're on. So we'll just keep moving forward here. Um, what's happening with Sage? HRMS is still um, currently their flagship HR payroll solution. There's no known retirement of this product planned or announced. However, Sage will not convert Sage HRMS to a, a browser-based digital solution. With that information, by default, this product will have a limited lifetime. Uh, technology constraints and buyer expectations will push um, the product out of the market, basically. Plus, there are no plans for mobile access, which we all love. Sage is uh, an acquisition firm and has purchased a browser-based HR product that they labeled Sage People, but have yet to acquire a browser-based payroll product. So um, I'm just going to interject right there, Michael. Sage has been looking for solutions for that browser-based product for a real long time. And that's why Sage people did not make it onto our shortlist in our search to uh, find the future looking and, and the replacement for the products. Right, right. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, they are moving Sage, uh, all clients, from maintenance pricing to subscription pricing. They are no longer doing a perpetual license. Everyone is being forced to move to subscription with uh, year one basically equaling your current maintenance fee. Got a little ahead of myself there. And uh, last but not least, still a little ahead of myself. Last but not least, while they do guarantee, Sage guarantees a maximum, a maximum of a 12% price increase annually, the industry average is only six for a digital solution. So if it makes no sense to pay rising fees for legacy software that has no growth roadmap. Sage and other legacy software from the 90s and 2000s came to the market with a kind of best of breed concept. Um, what it was is they would get the core functionality and then they use add-on vendors to write you know, specialty products for them. Each logo you see here represents a unique user interface and probably another login. Each represents yet another database requiring duplicate entry or interfaces that are not real time. Each logo here represents an obstacle in developing reports with these silos of data. Studies that they've done with HR and payroll managers reveal the number one item uh, 
uh, on the requirements list for a new software system is a hire to retire solution. And that number in number two is leveraging current technologies. A rather, it's kind of a broad statement. Uh, so let's talk about it for just a second. And Michael, while you're transitioning yeah. here, I just want to mention that a lot of the people that we've worked with have this particular setup in place with the multiple items and it it has been difficult because they'll have a bit of recruiting and some performance reviews uh, but everything's not all in one place so it makes it just like you said the reporting is very difficult in this type of scenario right, right. thank you um so leveraging technology is really about transformation let's talk about the personal digital transmit transformation we are all part of what is called a digital renaissance or transformation, like it or not. Um, just think about these things. When was the last time you dropped film off at Walgreens or stood in line at a bank? How many years has it been since you were tethered to your desk with a phone cord? How many of you have even used it? How many, how many people even use a camera anymore? Uh, none of us think of these as alternatives to technology uh, and digital tools we have at our fingertips. These kinds of transformation is what we look for when we vetted Scissortail ourselves uh, as our next HR payroll offering. We refer to this as a renaissance because the transformation will continue. It wasn't all that long ago that the fax machine uh, was the enhancement to to the US mail. Uh, early electronic systems replaced inner office mail runs and Lotus 123 eliminated paper spreadsheets. Can someone tell me what Lotus 123 even is? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit outdated these days. <laughs> um, now, all of these have been eliminated with Office 365 and Microsoft Excel. Um, you're all looking for a level of sophistication and software that changes how to do a task, uh, not just how to streamline a task. Um, think about the camera example. We're not using a streamlined camera. We replaced it with a smartphone. We do the task differently. That is what each of us needs to consider when we are streaming, streamlining our HR and payroll processes. We need to leverage technology, do it a better way. Um, here's some examples of uh, how Scissors Tell stepped up. Um, automated notifications, right? Not only uh, that you see the text alert or email notification on any device, but notifications that are driven by any change in the state of information. So some examples uh, of that, an employee's benefit waiting period has arrived. Um, automated notice to all managers when clocking in and out uh, outside of a shift schedule. You get an automated notification that somebody's doing that. Uh, or a notification that a manager just completed a performance review so we can move it on down the line through the process. Um, automated workflows. This is another one that Scissortail came with. Moving virtual documents through your business processes. The completed application notifies the recruiter then the recruiter schedules the interview, the then the manager makes the hiring decision. The offer letter is issued and the employee onboarding begins. So we got each person in the process is notified when a task is requested of them and all results and actions are logged virtually attached to the employee file. Another thing they came with was end-to-end -end paperless systems. All documentation should be initiated digitally, attaching it to the employee profile from their W-2 and I-9 to benefit enrollment to performance reviews. Paperless also means copies of all your tax reports and filings would be digital within your HR solution. No more hard copies or PDF management. We can start eliminating some of those filing cabinets that are strung all over the office. Scissortail gives real-time visibility for any one staff member or company-wide uh, initiatives. They also, analytics and dashboards was a focus. Uh, the preferred reporting tool is no longer uh, 
long reports that still have to be analyzed, big uh, worksheets and things that we have to lay out across our desk. Um, don't do that anymore. Buyers, uh, buyers expect simple tools that can build dashboards, leveraging the analytical reports with drill downs. Uh, we've got some great slides about dashboards coming up. Finally, employee empowerment and collaboration. We want to give all employees access to the appropriate information. You know, gone are the days of user licenses. We need employ and we need informed employees that make quality decisions. Allow anywhere, anytime access. You know, Sizzle Tells 365. All you have to have is internet access. Um, digital expectations in 2022. Um, with with the expectations um, high for HR managers and payroll managers, features like these must be included in any new investment you may be considering. Uh, the mobile access, single database, unlimited users, you guys can read down through there. Um, but this, uh, this is why it does not make sense to make any digital or make any investment uh, in a legacy system because they don't have these. Uh, legacy software have been have served us all well for many many years. Uh, while it's not ready for the nursing home, the brochures are certainly on the coffee table for the end of these legacy systems. For all the reasons uh, that I've discussed, this is why we added Scissor Till to the portfolio as an option uh, for our legacy software clients. Uh, you can see that a single database is, is, uh, issue is addressed. You can also add digital tools as part of all modules. Now we have APIs allow systems to talk to each other no matter the language. So an API, I'm oh, just going to interrupt okay. you for a second. Go right ahead. Uh, if you think back to, and, and some people may be too young, but we're just going to tell them to look it up. It happened. It was on YouTube. Um, but Star Trek, and everybody had those personal translators where they could talk, and the people they were talking to would hear what they were saying in their own language. That's right. what the API does, because it basically translates information from this hire to retire product to let's say an accounting software if needed. Um, so uh, that's that's just my take on the API. Thank you. It's uh, that explains it. It took Rhonda use that example for me uh, when I very very first started uh, <laughs> to help me understand APIs. So um, you know I rolled through some of these things. I'm going to hand it over to the expert, Rhonda, and uh, let her talk to you a little bit about some more of the technical stuff. All righty. Thank you, Michael. Um, so like we've been saying, the HR and payroll shoppers had asked for a better HRMS solution uh, or an HRIS solution, and we're real confident that we found it. Um, our choice as you've heard, was to add Scissortail HCM by UKG to our CS3 portfolio as an alternative to those legacy offerings. Now, according to the study that we've been talking about of the HR and payroll professionals, they had three requirements that had to be met before any product would make their shortlist when replacing their current products. We referenced the study and leveraged that information uh, as we evaluated products internally um, to ensure that the choice that we make is going to meet those expectations. So today we're going to look at those three must-have requirements and then um, we're even going to dive into some of our favorite features that kind of came on as an added bonus for our uh, as part of our scissor tail HCM selection. So let's talk about the first of those three must-haves, and it's the single database. 
Um, Michael, you've talked about it quite a bit, um, you know, as we were getting started here, but um, this is the biggest deal for everybody, right? We talked about that best of breed with all of those different logos on that uh, particular screen, and those days are over, you know, it, they're, they're what we would call antiquated at this point, and you just have to be able to have everything work well together. So those older systems have a minimum of two databases, depending on your specific configuration, you may have as many as six or more databases. And that's just impossible to manage effectively because you cannot easily do reports that combine all of those uh, disparate databases. So with scissor tail, every component from the first employment application to the day an employee separates from your organization, all of that information as well as external documents are stored in a, in a single database. This means that you will be going to one product with one user interface, using one sign on, and having the same experience, no matter what day of the week it is or what device you're using. That right, single... I... So I, I was just gonna interject, I hate logging into multiple systems. So oh, it's, it's hard to remember passwords because they're, they expire at different times and all of that excitement. But um, yeah, the single database gives you greater success in reporting because you, you don't have to join those databases and you don't have to be a, an IT expert to know how to create those reports. Nice. So as we go and we look at the um, next item, okay, I just lost my notes here for a second. Sorry about that. But the number two item on the list was the data access, right? This is their number two priority. They want easy reporting. We kind of alluded to it just now, but most legacy products include a product called uh, Crystal Reports. I think a lot of our HRMS people on the call today know Crystal Reports. It was pre-packaged with HRMS. It was pre-packaged with Abra. Um, and other other legacy tools out there too. It has it as part of the system. And that was your only choice for custom reports. And it is a super powerful tool, but it's not designed for the everyday user, like an everyday HR or payroll user. You really have to either take specific training classes to go through some extensive, you know, one-on-one -on -one training. It could take 12 hours to get trained on these products. Um, so even IT professionals come to those classes, right? Um, but Scissor Tail has an embedded reporting tool. You can see these little screens uh, here on the uh, slide, but this embedded tool can be found on any screen inside Scissor Tail. And it's real simple. You just do the add and remove columns as you need them. Uh, the tool is a drop-down list that is uh, pre-group data of uh, fields for the scenario where you're starting from, essentially. And it, it makes it real easy to just save it and share it with other team members as you wish. So um, it takes about maybe 15 minutes to learn how to do this. Um, as compared to that 12 hours we talked about just a minute ago. So yeah. And then of course, um, <clears throat> with Scissor Tail, your routine reports are accessed from a dashboard, right? You talked about dashboards a little bit ago. This is kind of a screenshot of what it looks like when you first log into Scissor Tail. The dashboard has multiple tabs across the top. It's got all of the, um, good information where you just drill down into it. It takes you straight to the report that built that particular tile. These are a list of widgets that are pre-built uh, that can automatically um, be added to your dashboard just at a click. And they're quickly added. You know, it's just a point click tool. They take maybe 10 minutes to learn dash dashboards. So it's a super powerful tool that can be provided to everybody out there. Awesome. So the third requirement, and that was collaboration. Um, the 
survey showed the software buyers wanted to be able to promote uh, employee engagement with technology. And so that employee engagement and collaboration is fulfilled in uh, two ways. Um, alerts and workflows, which we're seeing a, a small shot of a workflow here. Um, and in an old legacy software, if it offered alerts and workflows, that was always a third party add on and uh, kind of like knowledge sync, I think was one of them. And it required an IT type person or someone with special training to be able to develop and manage those knowledge sync notifications. Scissor tail again has that embedded tool. That means you no longer have to send and manage a bunch of emails during the processes like onboarding or recruiting, performance reviews, or anything like that. So because this is built into Scissor Tail, the learning time again is, is very short um, and was designed with the HR and payroll person in mind. So next would be um, allowing the appropriate access to every employee. So the older software, if we talk about that, uh, the pricing model was you had so many administrative users, and then you also had a number of employees. And it was based on kind of that balance of who's gonna actively be updating and maintaining the software, and how many employees do we have, how, how much, are we maintaining? How much data are we maintaining in the system? With scissor tail, there's no, no charge for those additional users. Any employee, um, anybody you want to access the software, every, every employee in the organization will have access to the software if you grant it to them. So any employee you authorize can feature or access the features that you allow them to access. Now everyone is on the same page. So it, it gives the staff member an opportunity to log into Scissor Tail and that bell up there in the top right hand corner um, has that universal dot in it that we see on our phones. And that keeps every staff member on task. It reminds them they have a predefined uh, task with a workflow that they need to complete. And then there is a third thing, a third thing. This is probably why I messed up. If you can see my camera, I'm holding up two fingers. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, because I started on, on this particular as we have two things, but there is a third thing and it's the announcements. And those announcements are right there in the center of the screen. And um, those pop up when you log in to Scissor Tail, if there is an announcement to be had. So it's kind of like a digital bulletin board where you can post reminders about anything from open enrollment to company picnics, holiday hours, and even training videos. So um, it's, it's a pretty nice thing to have and you're in control of how long those announcements are out there and, and you can even ensure that they stay on a widget on the employee screen even if they click that little box down at the bottom that says, don't show me that message again. So, so this is, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, but so this is just like the thing you sent out the other day uh, on our board that said there was an update to the employee handbook. And you got it. That's exactly okay. it. So right. as we make changes, as we have things we want to remind everybody of, those announcements come in really handy when people are logging into Scissor Tail. So that covers those three must haves that all of those HR and payroll professionals in that survey had indicated. Um, once we confirmed that Scissor Tail addressed those three items, then in order to ensure we were making the best choice, we started to look for outstanding features. These are the features that really do make a difference in the HR and payroll professionals daily life. Um, even though they are cool, they're not just cool, they're not just flashy, they don't just have that new car smell, they really are useful uh, type things. So um, they distinguish Scissor Tail from all the other products we reviewed on your behalf. Um, we found it just does these tasks better. So I'm gonna drill into each one of these items on this list 
And if we just move on to the next uh, slide, we'll just take them one at a time. Gotcha. So employee self-service. Employee self-service is not separate in scissor tail. I think we've already talked about that, but it was created with the employee in mind. So <clears throat> the strategy was designed that the entire product, every functional area of scissor tail is thinking that the employee is probably going to have to touch that, or there's going to be an interaction with the employee at some point. So with that in mind, um, they took other things into account. So, for example, employees can access the information that you allow them to access from any device, any device that has a browser or a mobile app. So this is a, a, a picture of what the mobile app looks like. So this then, is a snippet of your phone? Yes, it is. Okay. When okay. I open the mobile app, it has my start bar, and uh, for me, it's got a timesheet. I know we've got a picture of our, our demo employee there, but yes, this is what my phone looks like when I pull up the app. Then, if, if uh, we can take another look at the next item, they can actually look at their pay stubs, either from their phone or from the computer, um, and you, it's kind of small, like an eye chart, but there's an option to download that PDF right there. So no matter the device, you can download a copy or your pay stub if you need to. Um, they can pull their W-2s. Again, they don't have to wait for any copies of that form. They don't have to ask you. They're on their own. They're self-sufficient. Um, they can also have the option to update their demographic information. They moved, new address, Michael's fixing to do that same thing. He's going to log into our system, update his address with the team, uh, with HR anyways, and um, then it just flows right into your employee record. So, of course, the final thing is benefits. So, with the employee in mind, um, Scissor Tail has the ability to give all benefits open enrollment, new employee enrollment, life event changes, all of those things can be initiated or done by the employee from any device. Um, their experience is going to be the same no matter where they come into it from, and it can reflect your process uh, in there so that once they tell you what changes they want, you have a record with their electronic signature that gives you the authorization to make those changes for the coming year. So just a quick personal story. Uh, as many of you guys know, we use this, we use scissor tail internally. Um, and I'm a bit of a car nut. So <laughs> randomly I'll go to a car lot and find something that I like. And the last vehicle I bought, uh, th this was great. Um, I think Rhonda, I've talked to you about this. I was able to pull, my w-2s and my pay stubs from my phone at the car lot so it it did help me spend money but it, uh but the f and i guy was really happy when you were done with that right he was like oh this is easy absolutely so that's one of the great benefits for me <laughs> awesome yeah it comes in handy for that right, right. so because those things don't usually happen you know just on the weekend right and if no. they if they do Thursday. happen on the weekend, there's nobody in the HR office to give you a copy or to pay stuff or anything. So. Or Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, okay, well, moving on, tax outsourcing <laughs> options. So, with Scissor Tail, this is one of those cool things that we just thought was an outstanding feature. Um, most solutions that you've seen previously or are on the market kind of have an all or nothing approach when it comes to your tax uh, outsourcing. Right. Either you outsource everything or it's all yours to handle and you're fully responsible for it. I think um, we had Atrix was a product that we used with uh, HRMS for a while and Abra and it helped with some of those older uh, products by giving some W-2 printing and processing options and things of that nature. 
but um, the cool thing about scissor tail that was really a big um, wow for us was that you can basically make this an a la carte option for in any client. It can work the way you want to work. Either you continue to run the entire payroll process and, and tell us, take all the tax uh, duties and, and do them for us, or you pick and choose, you know, am I going to um, do everything up until the W-2s or the 1095s, those types of things. Um, so it's, it's, uh, you can you can pick and choose how you want to handle all of the tax responsibilities. So the choice is yours with scissor tail. And uh, that was a really unique item. So moving on to the payroll outsourcing options, um, it's very similar, right? Um, outsourcing a payroll with a lot of the other um, legacy softwares, if it was an on-prem software, there was really just no option, right? You just couldn't do the outsourcing. Um, but with some of the current options, you don't get to have this pick and choose mentality. So there's been a lot of uh, expression of the desire to move payrolls outside and have us manage it for uh, some of our clients. And it's just like taxes. You get to pick and choose the level of um, responsibility you want to have versus handing something off to the CS3 team. So it's it's super simple. You can decide to offer or decide, you know, I'm going to do it like I always have. I'm going to keep, keep my hands on it and keep it in-house. Um, but then someday something changes and you're like, I just don't have time for this or my our, our company model is changing and we just want to outsource that payroll. Um, it's super easy. It's, it's either a phone call to CS3 or it's an email to CS3 that says, hey, we're looking to outsource our payroll. What can you do for us? And we, we give you all the steps. And I mean, there's, there's really not a lot to it. One day you're doing it and the next day we're doing it. Um, as an example, um, we've had even some clients who maybe their payroll administrator has had an unexpected event and is not going to be able to run payroll this week or for a period of time. And so they've contacted us and said, hey, what are, can you help us? We don't know how long it's going to be. We don't think we need to find someone else. And we stepped in and did their payrolls for them. And it was just super easy. And, and I think, you know, some people could consider us part of their disaster plan, right? In those particular right. areas. So you have a lot of options with scissor tail and they're, they're just there to reflect the nature of your business. However, you're planning uh, your business roles, then that's the way we're going to roll with you too in these, in these couple of options. Nice. So the next item, paperless. You talked a lot about it a little while ago, yes, uh, but you know, scissor tail moves you to a paperless environment in a lot of ways. Um, the first way is the management of government forms. These forms are direct from the government website. They pull up inside scissor tail, they're fillable, I-9s, W-4s, all the employee completes these as part of their onboarding or for a W-4, they could make changes to this at any time throughout the year. Um, and it would just follow that workflow and go to the appropriate person to be processed or, um, you know, approved and then it becomes part of the employee's permanent record. Um, so they're automatically loaded into payroll for processing as far as the W-4 goes and attached to the employee's profile. Next would be the internal forms. Um, again, I always refer back to onboarding, but a lot of people have, there's so much that we can do in onboarding with all of these different options. And these uh, internal forms, things like a handbook acknowledgement or um, a, a particular policy acknowledgement, maybe you're doing signing out uh, assets to an employee. Here's your computer, your keys, your what have you. All it takes is a, a document that you currently have in a PDF form. We upload it into Scissor Tail. Uh, 
add a couple of fillable blanks on it and boom, it's yours. And it also can include those electronic signatures. So those, once they're completed, again, routed to the appropriate person for notification if needed. Otherwise, um, always attached to the employee record to be kept in a single um, location. Um, and then last is any additional supporting documents. So if you think of anything that you would ever attach to an employee, maybe it's a driver's license, maybe it's a, a court order for a garnishment of some sort. Um, these can all be attached to the employee. Depending on the type of document that you are attaching, maybe you want to put it on a, uh, maybe you want to attach a spreadsheet to a specific payroll um, to add backup documentation for Michael's commission uh, payments that, that come out at the end of the month or what have you. So that's, that's how that works. And once you upload those documents, they're not only part of that individual payroll or that individual process, they're also found in a, a place just on the employee record. So they're, again, part of that um, grouping that all of those documents are married to the employee profile uh, including uh, performance reviews and disciplinary action forms. Nice. So flexible pay rates. This is kind of difficult. Um, HRMS was really complicated and uh, pay rates can get super complicated, first of all. But then to go in to, uh, and only have one pay rate that you can offer somebody before being able to put in um, you know, secondary jobs and list each of those individually. So in scissor tail, the way it's handled is different. Um, we can uh, track those rates and apply them based on, uh, maybe they apply to all employees, maybe they apply only to a certain department, um, maybe one employee just has a special rate table. All of those can be added in a group type setting and you can set up those rate tables to calculate the correct pay based on either the shift or the department or the day of the week and they're set again at a company level or to a specific employee so we're looking at an example of a rate table for winery and if they stomp grapes they get paid one rate and that rate could change if they stomp on a Saturday or a Sunday. So uh, then if they are a barrel roller, they can have an entire different set of rates. Um, based on this uh, example, we could actually look at like if the employee was to clock in and choose their job, maybe they're moving from one job to another throughout the day, then scissor tail automatically knows to associate the appropriate rate from that rate table to that cost center that or that job that the employee has chosen. So the employee has no idea what's going on. All he knows is his check is right at the end of the pay period. So pretty nice. cool. Right. <laughs> I like so, this part. <laughs> let's go back to that mobile app and that car buying experience, right? Um a lot of the other systems that are out there just don't have a mobile app and if they do it's uh wildly different from the uh on-prem uh software that that a lot of people are using so that would require learning two systems uh two ways of navigating around the system um, typically a low employee adoption uh, type scenario um, scissor tail, again, designed for the employees. Starting at the frontline employee, you can see here that whether you're on your phone or if we um, look at, this was a mobile app. So this is your computer desktop, your laptop, whatever it is, that's what <clears throat> the browser looks like. And this is a tablet. So a screenshot from each of those different devices. You can see the only difference is that we're going to have to scroll to see all those tiles right, right on our mobile devices so they're going to have the same experience no matter what all right michael i think that i covered everything yeah 
thank you so much for coming in and speaking with us today. All right. Um, before I let you off the hook, um, let's open it up for some questions. Uh, feel free to type some in. I've already got a couple. Um, we'll start with the with this one, Rhonda. Uh, the first one okay. says, um, can I use my existing time system slash clocks? With yes. So, okay. <clears throat> Scissortail does have its own uh, timekeeping system. So if it's a legacy system, eventually, you know, sometimes you can't make all of those changes all at once. If you have a system that maybe is working with your manufacturing uh, software that is doing job costing and things of that nature, that can export anything that can export a file, Scissortail can pull it in as part of the payroll process and just move right through. Awesome. All right, second question here. Let me read this. Um, can I keep my employees from clocking in with their phone? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. The experience, even though we said the experience is the same no matter which device they're on, mm -hmm. we can actually lock down that mobile clocking uh, and only give it to the people you want to give it to or give it to no one. It is completely up to the, the administrators. Uh, or the project manager's um, discretion on the client side. So one thing I do know about <laughs> from the cell phone and all that good stuff is we can geo fence, right? We can. Oh yeah. Yeah. People, Every they time can, they can only clock in when they're on property, or you know, so they can't clock in too early. Once, you are so correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um. Next question. Uh, how many people can we have in the system at any given time? All of them. All of them. Does that? <laughs> so, so Scissor Tail yeah. is the product where it, it looks at all of your employee count. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, that is everybody is considered a user. So it's uh, not like we've seen with HRMS where you can only have, you know, like if you bought five seats and you have six actual people with logins, but only five of them can be in at a time, Scissortail will allow you, anybody that has a login can be inside the system at any time. So we want, we, a, a customer would want everybody on the system because it's collaborative and it's self-feeding. Uh, yes. And it's because of that self-service that that they look at it that way, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, that was the last question. I'll keep a an eye open for any other. Oh, hang on a second. We've got one more. It just came in. I'm trying to get to it. Oh, I'll have to circle back and answer it to him. I can't get it to open well enough for me. I think I, I see one out there, uh, Michael. Is this the one on the um, so trial about, final payroll scenario? You'd have to correct something and then run the trial again. Can you just describe the process of running a payroll? Yes. So, sorry, Michael, I just took the question right out of your mouth. No, go right ahead. I couldn't get um, it to open. So, in that scenario, the um, what we do in, in Scissor Tail is you have, we think back to Abra and HRMS, they both kind of had that payroll processing map where it told you, go to this step, do this process, go to this step, do that process. So in Scissor Tail, the my favorite thing, there's a problem with Michael's check. I can go to Michael's check, I can make that correction. As soon as I save the correction on Michael's pay statement, it recalculates his pay statement and then I'm done with it. I don't have to recalculate or run another trial payroll for the entire crew. Um, so you can do it on a check by check basis. Um, if anything needs a correction, maybe you need to add an adjustment or you left somebody's cell phone allowance off. All of that can be just, you just put it on that individual's pay statement, save it, and that statement is reprocessed and you can continue through your process. So we don't have to hear those, those terrible words that makes 
every person squeamish. I have to rerun payroll. We right. eliminated that, right? Okay. Right. Yeah, it will give you a, a step, right, where you can stop and uh, lock it down, so no more changes can be made. You can do a fine, you know, you can do a, another review if you need to uh, go back and make a change because during your review you thought, uh oh, um, just unlock it, go back in, make that change on that one person statement because it's always one person, and. Uh, as soon as you save it, you're done. You go check your totals one more time. You're good. You're finalized. You hit that finalize button. Awesome. I love I it. I don't see any more questions. Do you? I don't but know. If you, if you guys do have questions, feel free to email us. Um, it's not a problem at all. Robin and I are here every day for you. Um, so once again, Rhonda, thank you for coming in today and uh, spreading some knowledge, sprinkling some education upon us. Um, here's a recap of what Rhonda just shared with us. Uh, Scissortail, as you heard, hit the top three must-haves, uh, plus a long list of digital features. Our plus seven process, I'm gonna talk to you guys about this for just a quick second here. We're so confident in the plus seven process that we follow that we offer a 100% money back guarantee. You can also expect your solution deployment to be a non-event by embracing our process. We are able to do this because of our clearly defined steps and years of experience. Uh, the guarantee is on the software cost as well as implementation fees. All we ask is that you give us the opportunity to make you happy. Uh, your consultative sales process would start with a comprehensive discovery phase. Uh, these, uh, this stage includes interviews with your key team, mem key team members and order with, uh, to create detail and uh, find those critical issues that you guys need. Um, the information translated into your summary as a findings document with a uh, ROI statement that defines the savings for your, your solution should yield. Um, so what's next? Uh, what's the next steps? Our recommendations to you before we leave here today. Uh, no more investments in legacy uh, products uh, or third-party add-on products. Depending on the size of your initial software purchase, you will want to set a cap on the amount of future investment in your current product. If you guys are reaching like a five figure investment, this should be a red flag for you to look at your, uh, look at HR and payroll alternatives. Um, if the time is rolling around for a new server, new hardware, it may be wiser to move to a cloud solution like Scissortail. So we don't have to have all that on-prem stuff. Um, put your leadership on notice that your old software needs to be replaced. Uh, get it on the budget within the next three years. And then finally, initiate your HCM evaluation. You guys can do this by emailing me at mcollier at cs3tech.com. Just a final thought here. I saw somebody post this up. If you did not receive your gift card for lunch, please check your spam. And if it is not there, send me an email and I'll get it over to you. I want to thank you guys for joining us today so we can talk about Scissor Tail. We can talk about the digital uh, revolution that is going on. Um, so thank you guys. And I look forward to talking to you all very soon. Have a wonderful day.